The lesson topic for this video is graph parabolas, and this is when we have to find the vertex when there are no x-intercepts. So what you learned on the previous lesson is that once you find your two x-intercepts, let's say there's one here and here, um, you would be able to average those x-intercepts to find that middle of those, to find the line of symmetry, which would lead us to the vertex. Well, what happens if there's no x-intercepts? So let's say the parabola is up here. Well, then how do we go through and find the equation for the line of symmetry and the vertex if we don't have x-intercepts? So I'm going to show one example in standard form and one example in uh, vertex form on the next screen. So like usual, we start off by thinking about how our x-intercepts are... Um, let's do this our x value when our y value is 0, and how we usually say we have one of them or two of them, or in some cases we have none. All right, so let's put 0 in for y, and we'll go through our solving steps. First thing you'll notice when you see this equation is it's not in vertex form. If it's not in vertex form, we need to solve by using factoring or the quadratic formula. So uh, I'm going to multiply a and c to get my ac term from my magic number, which is 46x squared. And we think about the factors of 46 are 1 and 46, and 2 and 23, and there's no other ones. And neither of those is going to help me get that negative 13 in the middle. So remember, that tells us we can't factor, which means we need to use the quadratic formula. So a equals 2, the number in front of x squared, b equals negative 13, and c equals 23. So go ahead and use the quadratic formula and solve this. We should all be practicing that as we go. Uh, that's 4 times a times c in the root there all over 2 times a. So we get x equals negative negative 13, which is 13 plus or minus the square root of 1, uh, or thir negative 13 squared is 169 minus 4 times 2 times 23, which is 184, all divided by 4, and we get x equals 13 plus or minus the square root of 169 minus 184 is 15, negative 15, pardon me. And we divide that by 4. And I'm kind of getting into my space for my line of symmetry, but that's okay. So we get, let's see here, x equals 13 plus or minus i root 15 over 4. Now, it's important that you actually write that whole step down because here's the deal. Now that we know that there is an i in our answer, we know we're in the imaginary number system. Imaginary solutions means there's no real solutions for solving for x, so there's no x-intercepts. And again, that means we can't find, whoops, sorry about that. We cannot find um, any x-intercepts on here because they don't exist, so we, can, we can't average them to find our equation for the line of symmetry. So here's what we have to do in this form. If we're in standard form and we do our quadratic formula and we get to here and there's i, here is a little trick for finding the equation for the line of symmetry. It is, um, well, it is x equals negative 2, negative b, pardon me, over 2a will tell us the line of symmetry. x equals negative b over 2a. Now we've seen negative b over 2a before because if you think about the quadratic formula from the very beginning, it's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of this stuff all over 2a. So negative b over 2a, this piece right here, is this part right here not including the plus or minus the square root. Long story short, you can just simply do this right like this, and that is your line of symmetry your equation for your line of symmetry. So if you ignore the plus or minus, the i and the root 15, ignore everything with a plus or minus and beyond, this will always be your line of symmetry. So our line of symmetry here is x equals 13 over 4, which is 3.25. So that is our equation for the line of symmetry. x equals 3.25. If we put a vertical line at that location, is 
sorry, kind of hard to do when we're on the iPad. There is the x equals 3.25 vertical line for the line of symmetry. And now we are ready to continue with our steps just like we did in the previous lesson. We're going to find our vertex by putting the value of x in that we know from the line of symmetry and finding the y value. So we know this is 3.25, and we can use trace to find our y value. And then we can also come over here to find our y-intercept, and we know that if we put 0 in for x, we can find our y-intercept. So go ahead, use your calculator, put this in, trace 3.25 and trace 0, and we're going to find our two values we need to help us graph this. All right, and for the vertex, we get 1.875. And for our um, y-intercept, we get 23. So let's plot our vertex on our coordinate plane. 3.25 means the x value is on the line of symmetry, which we knew, and the y value is 1.875, so that's approximately here. And then we know our y-intercept is at 23. So not the best example. Again, sometimes uh, they don't quite fit. But if we extend this um, y-axis up here, let's see here, there's 10, 20, 23, probably be right in this region here. Sorry about that. And we go ahead and graph our parabola with simply knowing that vertex will have to come from the vertex, I should say, come through that point there. And then we need it congruent on the other side, so we make it about the same going the other direction. So there's our parabola. When we don't have any x-intercepts, we find the line of symmetry by using this little trick right here. The beginning and the denominator of our quadratic formula, if you ignore this part, will tell us our line of symmetry. All right, so let's do one more here, and let's talk about what happens if we're in um, uh, vertex form and this happens. All right, so here we go. Our x-intercepts, once again, we are going to find by thinking about what is my x value when y is 0. There might be two of them, there might be one of them, there might be none of them. We're going to put 0 in for y. And we're going to keep our solving skills sharp here by solving this. I'm going to add 5 to both sides, which means I'm going to get 5 equals negative 1 half x minus 3 squared. I didn't show the step there, I just did the math there. Now we're going to divide both sides by negative 1 half. Um, and dividing both sides by negative 1 half is the same as multiplying by negative 2. So multiply by negative 2 on both sides. Uh, the negative 2 and the negative 1 half will cancel and make 1. And this will be, sorry I forgot the negative over here. Let's get that in. This will be negative 10 equals x minus 3 squared. We're going to square root both sides of the equal sign. When we do so we get plus or minus square root of negative 10 equals x minus 3. Um, and we know that this means plus or minus i root 10 equals x minus 3. I'm going to take that last step and add 3 to both sides and get my final answer. So we have, those cancel, x equals um, plus or minus i root 10 plus 3. All right, so here's the deal. We know once again that this tells us, this i tells us there's no real solutions for x, so we can cross this out. There's no x-intercepts. And on the previous example, we were able to use the piece of the quadratic formula that would tell us our equation for the line of symmetry. Okay, notice that does not work here because we don't have the quadratic formula. Okay, so this isn't going to help us find our line of symmetry. What's going to help us is that, let's talk about the fact that I've called this right here vertex form several times, but we haven't really talked about y. Vertex form looks like this for quadratics. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. All right, and what that tells us, uh, or why, I should say, why it's called vertex form is because just like when we have point-slope form, um, in a linear equation, it tells us that there's a point that we can read directly from the equation. The vertex form of a quadratic tells us the vertex of the quadratic or the parabola just by looking at the equation. And the vertex is h comma k. And this is huge because here's h 
and here's K. All right, so we're going to pull our vertex directly from our equation because the H will come from here and the K will come from here and we will know our vertex. So be careful because again if this is a negative H right here and we want to write H here it's always going to be the opposite of what it looks like. So if it says minus 3 it's going to be a positive 3. If it says plus 8 it's going to be a negative 8. But then notice that the K value is exactly as it should seem because this is a positive right here. So if it says plus 5, k is 5. If this says minus 3, then k is negative 3. So again, it will be the opposite value of this, and it will be exactly this value here. So if we look at our equation right here, we find h and k by looking right here and right here. h and k. All right? So if h, if it has x minus 3 right here, our vertex has a positive 3 for its vertex down here. So if this says minus 3, this is positive 3. Then our k value, if this says negative 5, it goes in as negative 5. So that one does not change because the standard or the uh, general form for vertex form is plus k. So we don't change it. So whatever this is, minus 5 goes here. So our vertex is at 3, negative 5 on our coordinate plane. 3, negative 5 is right here. So then what do we know? Well, then we know our equation for our line of symmetry. Remember, this number goes right here. Our line of symmetry is going to go through that point, so we know it's at 3. Okay. And then lastly, we're still going to find our y-intercept. And the way we find our y-intercept always is to put a 0 in for x to find our y-value. So we're going to go ahead and do that using trace. And we get negative 9.5. So we know our y-intercept is right here, negative 9.5, right there. And now we are able to graph from our vertex through this point like so, and then a... Um, congruent branch on the other side. And there is our parabola. So again, another weird thing that happens if there are no x-intercepts in your vertex form, no x-intercepts, we need to go to the vertex by looking directly at the equation, pull that number, make it the opposite, this number is the same, and then that will tell us our line of symmetry, and then we find our y-intercept the same way. So a couple of weird things that happen when we don't have x-intercepts, and we need to practice that for sure.